all right hello everyone we're back in a new video new tutorial and in this tutorial we're gonna go over how to make this really cool per metric or design avocado i mean i'm not really sure how to call it yet maybe by the time this goes out you will see the the thumbnail with the title of this what kind of avocado could this be but this is pretty much um a kind of a basic modeling tutorial um, probably divided in parts where you will see the different steps to get to something with this amount of detail um, and kind of referring back to some of the things that Saha did or other architectural firms do um, if you want to look up some of their works you will see that it's always known for these highly intricate detail flowing kind of shapes that kind of resemble a little bit of the organic movement of nature and so this is something that we all find just so amazing and really cool and so wouldn't it be cool to learn how to model it so that's what we're going to go over it um, in this tutorial we will be using rhino 8 and as you can see this is a trial version i haven't gotten my hands around the full version yet but everyone can download the trial version it's a 90 day version and it works marvelously and has so many new features that are not enough for me to go through in a couple of these videos so it's better if you guys can get hands on, on this software so we can follow up and with anything else to say let's just get it started so as you can see now um, we have this really cool design and I mean I've added a couple of materials to make it look nicer but we're also in the ray trace view so we're gonna go back into our shaded view and you can see a little bit of the wireframe of how does this thing look so before we really go over how to really model any of this um, we gotta do a couple things first and the first thing we'll get be getting the correct shortcuts in order to make all these elements happen so we're gonna go into options just type in options into the command because of this new Rhino thing I don't know why these you can't really see them so it's kind of strange but we're gonna go into keyboard so we want to find keyboard it's kind of hidden in there just click on keyboard and we're gonna start seeing all these new macros and kind of commands that run based on shortcuts so these are the ones that come with Rhino um, the in default mode but these are some of the ones that I've made myself and feel free to copy feel free to pause the video this is probably the first thing you want to do because it's really important that you increase your workflow you can always make your own but for this tutorial I suggest you do these so these are also I think default versions so actually don't do those because you probably will have them but all the ones that have to do with control shift these are the ones that I've changed myself so all these control shift make sure all the ones that you don't see in yours make sure you do just because it'll make things a lot easier and after you've done that we can get started so you can see control alt e and then the rest of these should be default I don't think and maybe these two control one control two three and four all right so we're gonna click OK of course we have these already and before we get started um, we also have to look a little bit over the gumball and that might be the first step of this tutorial so the gumball is a really interesting shape we're gonna go over how to model all this of course but the gumball is a, a very interesting element of Rhino because it gives you a lot of functionality and it gives you a lot of ability into changing things so if you can't see it if you can see this kind of three axis thing uh, make sure you go into your gumball seaplane and you turn it on if it's turned off you won't see anything if you click it you will see it and you'll start being able to move things around right um, there are a couple things to let's hide this big part for a second let's just work on the seed there's a couple of things about the gumball and the first thing is of course your three axes of movement and I mean this is pretty straightforward you just move things in three different axes but you also have other functions like the scaling and different axes and also to move in two axes at the same time so that way you only move in two dimensions and not on three and that can change as long as you look at it in a different position so you see how you have the two here look up two here right now this one that has these two things you can also hold shift and move it up and down and it will scale your object only in that dimension so you can see it's kind of only scaling it in that dimension and same for all the other ones right 
This is pretty useful if you want to scale things only in two dimensions. Um, if you want to scale things in three dimensions, um, you can just click one of these three scales, hold shift, and as you can see, it also just tells you scale 3D, hold shift. If you tap, if you tap out, um, you see how it duplicates it? That happens with everything. So if you hold alt before moving something, you will always duplicate it. And that's kind of always in Rhino. That's every time you use alt, you're most of the time duplicating something. Now, if you press alt before something, what do you, what's going to happen if you press it, if you press it before, you're going to duplicate it. If you press it after you're moving it, what you're going to do is start to snap to things, right? So, so you can see I'm snapping to some of the areas, but we're not going to use that. So don't worry about that. Make sure your O snap is turned off. We don't want it, we don't want it on for this tutorial. Um, and again, you have rotation, of course. If you hold shift, you rotate always to 90 degrees, which is pretty nice. And besides that, the last thing about the gumball, or I guess the next thing about the gumball, is understanding that you can always relocate it any way you want. So in Rhino 7, it used to be you had to hold control and then move something, but that doesn't do that anymore. Now Rhino 8, you have to double click it. So if you see, you can double click something. And as you can see, I mean, it tells you right here, which is pretty nice too, move gumball, double click. So if you double click it, now you're moving your gumball in a different position. And so now I can scale it only from here, as you can see. And it's not only for your arrows, it's also for your scaly thingies. I don't know how to call them. They're just the scaly lines, right? And they also work for your rotation. So you can rotate something in this way and, you know, move it like that. You know, it's pretty useful for moving your gumball. Now, of course, you want it back to position. So one of our shortcuts makes things go into C plane, but it's not resetting. So we want to go into this little gray menu um, and just reset gumball. And that way your gumball is reset it to that center. Um, if you try some of the shortcuts that we've established, if you do control shift V, we have this really interesting way of having our gumball always looking at you. And this is the camera alignment. What this does is that wherever you're looking at, your gumball is always going to look at you and it's always going to move in that direction. So if you want to rotate something, it'll always rotate to the position that you're looking at. And this is really useful for fine tuning specific things that otherwise would be really hard to do in a three axis that you're constrained by the C plane. So you can see control shift C gives you back to the C plane, which is this right here. This is the C plane. And it always aligns to that. If you do Control Shift V, you align to the view. If you can do Control Shift O, we're going to align to the object. And you can't see much here. There's not much of a change, but let's say I'm using just this face and I do Control Shift O, it'll align to the position of that face as best as it can, even though it's kind of doing that. So it's it's interesting to to be able to move your gumball around and kind of get become a master at using your gumball because that will make you your modeling skills a lot better. Now, now that we've gotten the gumball to the side, we can start getting into the modeling. And we have a first tutorial where we go over every single tool um, about sub D. But for this specific tutorial, we'll just use a couple of these, and we're gonna make it a lot easier. So the first thing is, let's take our our workflow for the previous avocado and let's make our new avocado um, for this one I took a very long time kind of just getting this really cool shapes and these elements but for this tutorial we're gonna see a much easier way and faster way to develop this